Water offerings are a common and important offering in the Tibetan Buddhist tradition. It's the simplest type of offering for your altar and is the easiest to make since you only need a supply of clean water. Though it's simple, it has many benefits such as creating the causes for a healthy body, pleasant speech and a strong, alert and flexible mind. Let's learn more. To make your water offerings, you'll need offering bowls, a supply of clean water, a jug and a clean cloth. You can use copper, brass, silver or gold bowls or even decorative glass, ceramic, wooden or stainless steel bowls according to your means. The jug you use should be reserved exclusively for the purpose of making offerings. It should not be used for anything else. It's best to use a jug with a spout or a pronounced lip to make it easier to pour without spilling. You will need a place to make water offerings, which is at a Buddhist altar or shrine. I've given a very simple explanation about a basic altar setup in my previous video on sensory offerings, which you can check out on YouTube. Before you begin, the bowls should be upturned in a row or on one end of your altar. This is so that you are not offering empty bowls on the altar. Offering empty bowls is inauspicious and it's disrespectful because it's like offering nothing to the Buddhas. This can even attract a type of spirit that can cause obstacles to your practice. Arrange your water bowls in rows, either straight or curved. Use seven or eight bowls for each row. If you use seven bowls, this represents the seven limbs of formal practice. If you use eight bowls, it has the same meaning as the eight sensory offerings. If you are short of space, you can arrange the bowls in two rows. Start the sequence closest to your Buddha image and go from left to right. The first step is to make sure that you have enough clean water near your altar to make the offerings. You can fill your jug with enough water to fill the bowls. Alternatively, you can use a bucket to transport water to your altar. Then you can fill your jug using the water from your bucket. This bucket should only be used for offering purposes and not for anything else. To begin, take the bowl on the left and pour a little water from the jug into it while reciting Om Ah Hung. Then pour most of the water into the next bowl leaving a little bit in the first bowl. Continue in this manner until all the bowls have some water in them. We do this because it is inauspicious to place an offering bowl on the altar with nothing in it. If you do this, your merits will decline. So that's why you should fill each of the bowls with a little water before making the actual water offering. Make sure your bowls are placed one rice grain width apart. If you place the bowls too close, it can make your mind dull. If you place the bowls too far apart, it is symbolic of being separated from your guru and the dharma. You should also be mindful when placing the bowls on the altar. If you put the bowls down noisily, it can make you go mad. Going from left to right again, fill all the bowls with water from the jug. You should fill the bowls up to within a couple of millimeters from the brim of the bowl. This is about the width of a grain of rice. As you fill each bowl, visualize that you are offering all the purest waters of the world to the enlightened beings. While making water offerings or any offering, it is advisable to cover your mouth. This is so you don't pollute the offerings with your breath. You can use your hand, a face mask or even a scarf. If you're using a scarf, it's advisable to use one that is white in color. It's also advisable to hold the offering jug with both hands while pouring. This is to demonstrate your respect for the three jewels. The recommended method 
of filling the bowls is to pour in a continuous stream. Start slow, then pour quicker, then slow down again before you reach the top of the bowl. If you do it in this manner, you will not splash and spill the water everywhere and make a loud noise while pouring. Making water offerings is also a type of concentration meditation. Be mindful and focused when you make your water offerings. If you spill water while pouring, your ethics may become loose. If you don't fill the water to the correct level, your standard of living can decline. And if you always overfill the bowl, you will gain intelligence, but it will not be stable. As such, you should make water offerings with awareness and mindfulness. If you do happen to overfill your bowl, don't worry. Just remember to be more mindful the next time. Simply empty out the excess and fill it to the correct level. This may sound simple, but some people have difficulty with making water offerings. Remember, as with anything in Buddhism, you may not be able to do it right away, but you can definitely train yourself to do it well. Once you've finished making the water offerings, light a stick of incense and wave it over the offerings, reciting the mantra Om Ah Hum. This purifies and blesses the offerings. When you do this, you visualize Om, which is white in color, Ah, which is red in color, and Hum, which is blue in color, on top of the water offerings. As you recite, the syllables dissolve one by one into the offerings. First, the hum syllable dissolves into the water offerings and purifies them. Next, the ah syllable dissolves into the water offerings and transforms them into nectar. Lastly, the om syllable dissolves into the water offerings and multiplies them. You can visualize each offering multiplied to fill the whole of space. You should think strongly that the Buddhas receive the essence of your offerings and are very pleased. The essence of the offering is not the physical water offering, but your purified and multiplied visualization. At the end of each day, clear the water offerings from right to left. You empty each bowl of water one at a time. Wipe it dry with a clean cloth reserved solely for this purpose. Then place the upturned bowl back on your altar. You can clear the water into the same bucket that you used to transport the water to your altar when making the offerings. You can place your bowls in the same position or you can stack up the upturned bowls to one side of the altar. While clearing the offerings, recite Om Benza Sato Hung, which is Vajrasattva's short mantra. If you know Vajrasattva's long mantra, you can also recite that instead. Think strongly that you are purifying all your negative karma and obscurations. Your water offerings should be set out and blessed before you begin your daily sadhana. Alternatively, you can make the offerings in the morning and clear them at night before sleeping. If you're doing this in the morning, you should take refuge and recite the four immeasurables before making the offerings. Once finished, you should recite a dedication. This is already included if you're making offerings as part of your daily sadhana. There is no limit to the number of water offerings you can make. You should try to have at least seven or eight water bowls. However, if space is limited, you can have less. And of course, if you have more space, you can offer multiple rows of seven or eight bowls or as many as you like. His Eminence Tsem Rinpoche set out as many water offering bowls that could fit on the altar. These offerings are still made every day. Even if you only have a limited number of bowls, you can still make as many water offerings as you like. After you have made a set of water offerings and consecrated them, Simply clear them and start the process again. 
You can repeat this until you have accumulated your desired number of water offerings. Remember, when you make water offerings, always go from left to right. And when clearing water offerings, go from right to left. In some practices, there is a minimum number of water offerings that you need to make. However, for most prayers, there is no minimum. The water from your offerings should be disposed of in a clean, respectful environment. You can use it to water the plants outside your home or even in your home. You can also give it to animals to drink. However, it should not be used for your own purposes such as drinking, washing dishes, cooking, etc. If you live in an apartment or in a home where this is not convenient, you can dispose of the water down the kitchen sink, but make sure that the sink is clean and there are no dirty dishes in it. It's not advisable to dispose the water down the toilet or the bathroom sink as it is not respectful. Offerings are items that we consciously give away to the enlightened beings, so we should never use them for our own purposes once the offerings are made. That's why an offering, including water offerings, also helps us to cut our attachment. Apart from what I've already mentioned, there are many more benefits to making water offerings. According to tradition, pure, clean water is said to have eight qualities. So when you offer it, you generate the causes to develop eight karmic benefits. One, you will have pure ethics. Two, you will always have access to delicious food. Three, your body and mind will become open, flexible and fit. Four, you will develop a clear mind. Five, you will develop a gentle mind. Six, you will purify your obscurations. Seven, you will develop pleasant speech. And eight, you will have a healthy body. In conclusion, water offerings are simple to make, yet yield immeasurable benefits for our transformation on the spiritual path. So if you aren't already making water offerings, why not give it a go? Thank you.